If you're a follower of my channel, I'd say there's a pretty good chance that you are a fan of Balenciaga, but today I have some news to break to you. Balenciaga has lied to you. Yes, that's right. Balenciaga, you see, they put Demna Vassalia, their creative director, on this pedestal like he's this great creative genius bringing these incredible designs to you. And listen, Balenciaga does have some great designs, but here's the lie. Demna is not doing it all, okay? Look, a luxury brand, they are a massive capitalist behemoth. No one man can do it all, so we can't hold it against Demna, but there is an army of people under him doing really important work and getting things done. And these people, they may, you know, be marketing people, they may be atelier type people, they may be calling up Kim Kardashian on the phone being like, look, we know that ad campaign was stupid, please come back, we'll give you lots and lots of money, buckets and buckets of money, Kim, please come back. But there is one person that I think is maybe the most important person that is ever worked for Balenciaga other than Demna himself. And that person is Martin Rose. There's a little hair on there, a little cat hair, that's all. Uh, Martine Rose, she is a really incredible designer and she started working with Balenciaga and Demna in uh, 2015, 2016, according to the stories that I've read. And she actually helped starting with the 2017 spring menswear collection. And right away in this show, you can see Martine Rose's work. Go look at Martine Rose mainline stuff, the things she's done year after year, collection after collection. The DNA of that was in the Balenciaga show. Like you would be forgiven for thinking this is a Martine Rose show, not a Demna Vesalia show. And I would say it only got stronger from there. Like throughout 2018, those shows are pure Martine Rose. And after 2018, she actually stopped working with Balenciaga. But to this day, to this very day, I believe you can still see that Martine Rose DNA in pretty much everything Demna does for Balenciaga menswear. I don't know what it is. It's kind of like, you know how a, a bloodhound can sniff you out because you just leave a crazy invisible scent trail behind you everywhere you go? Well, even now in 2023, Martin Rose's scent trail still lingers at Balenciaga and can be seen everywhere. So all of that is to say, um, in some ways, Martin Rose clothing and fashion is Balenciaga but even more pure. Now that might be sacrilege to a lot of people. I've been goofing on Demna in this video so far. I think he's a genius, okay? Calm down, settle down. Unless you are one of those people that is commenting under every post about Balenciaga saying, well, they're canceled, what are you doing? You're disgusting. You guys, uh, I don't care. I don't care, go away. But this video, okay, we gotta get to the point of this video. We have, a pair of shoes from Martin Rose mainline that I think has all of that Balenciaga DNA in it, but like distilled down to its very base level. Like this is doing what people love about Balenciaga footwear, but doing it in the most earnest and authentic and just real feeling way. The vibes are right on this one. Uh, so we're gonna check these out and we'll check out all the details, all that good stuff. Then. We'll try them on, see how they feel, how they fit, throw a fit together, and then that'll be the video. So let's dive in. Hey y'all, in case you missed it, I have a new Instagram. My last one got banned, whatever, it doesn't matter. My new Instagram is at low luxury clothing. Go follow me there, I post cool stuff. And I also made a threads, which is connected to Instagram. So yeah, at low luxury clothing, see you there. All right, let's start with the presentation, the box. I think people underestimate how important presentation is in luxury goods. So let's give them their due here. This is a matte black cardboard box and then uh, debossed on the front of it on top, Martine Rose, capital M, lowercase r, nice square around it. Uh, it kind of actually reminds me of the AMI Ami logo very similar i would say and this box it's it's not too big actually like balenciaga is known for their giant shoe boxes this ain't that it's the two pieces so it just lifts right off the top 
And then on the sides, we get all the relevant info. So let's see what we got here. Just a bunch of model names there, but we do see black and the size European 43. And then this is the more important sticker, I would say. Model number again and model name, Bulb Toe Chain Mule. That's right, I didn't tell y'all. They're mules uh, made out of leather, black size barcode. An incredibly uh, simple sticker, all things considered. So the presentation, you know, serviceable, but nothing to write home about. But let's see what she can do with the actual shoes when we take this off. All right, moment of truth, moment of truth. I don't think y'all are ready. I don't think you're ready. And you're still not ready. <laughs> okay, what is it? This is the dust bag? Hold on. Oh, this is so funny. Okay, so the dust bag is like a giant coated paper bag with just one little rope at the top. It's the same texture as like those USPS uh, envelope mailer type things. Uh, it's got that wrinkly crinkliness to it. I actually really like that. And of course the logo on the bottom. That's very Martine, sick. All right, but the important stuff of course is under this absurd dust bag. Here we go, big reveal. Okay, you know, yeah, it looks, it's a leather shoe, right? Yeah, nothing special about that. No, no, my friends, let's take it out so you can see. <laughs> oh my God, it's even better in person. You won't believe this. There you go, that's the angle you need. The clown shoe is here. From, from this angle, yeah, it looks bulbous, but not too crazy. But then once you start to see the curve from like, you know, this angle, damn, that's wild. Oh, the inside's even better. Oh yeah. So this is why it's called the bulb mule. Yeah. Okay, uh, let's start, details, let's go. I wanna start with the fabrication and stitching and stuff. It's a really nice like oiled calf leather, it looks like. You, I can smell it from here. Like it just has that nice leather vibe to it. Definitely kind of like processed and treated, but it feels like the quality is there, which I appreciate. Um, stitching is incredibly tight and clean. Like hot damn, those edges are nice, crispy edges. And she wasn't content to just leave it at a bulb. I gotta keep getting this angle. Like that's the money shot right there, right? Krusty the clown, baby. Okay. Uh, so a little extra detailing of this chain here, and I wanna understand how this is working as well. So we've got an extra leather panel that goes across the top, and I can like get my finger under there, okay, on top of the tongue. These little rivets here, right? And then this chain, it's like curb chain, going all the way over. It's kind of thin, it's not too chunky, kind of like a chain link fence type of thing. And I think that makes it more tasteful. If it was a giant like JW Anderson chain, that would be too much. So I actually really like this. Then we get to the heel and the insole. This is a mule, of course. There's the tiniest of tiny lips here. Let's see, yeah, there you go. So that's how much of a lip you get. It looks like maybe like a quarter of an inch, if that. Uh, this I'm guessing is faux leather may actually be real leather. I don't know. Anyway, uh, pressed into there, the Martine Rose logo, super clean. And of course, this being a mule, that insole is glued down. That ain't going anywhere. There's nothing along the sides here or there. So I'm guessing the size and stuff is inside the tongue, right? Wrong. Is there no info inside here at all? Yeah, that bad boy's empty. It's a void. My camera has no idea what's happening. No my focus. Wow, it really messed up. That's hilarious, actually. All right, no info inside this shoe. That's kind of a first. You don't see that very often. I love what she has done with the midsole. That is so sick. Okay, check this out. This is going to like pass by a lot of people, and I don't want it to go unnoticed here. It's a multi-material, multi-layered outsole. So the bottom is rubber here. We'll check out the sole in a second. Rubber, and then a stack of leather right here in between that's then scalloped all around the edges. And the scalloping is actually really nice and clean going all the way around. That is so sick. So you've got those layers there and that continues at the heel. So it's rubber, stacked leather, rubber, 
leather again, I believe. So it's a nice tasteful heel here. Maybe I think that's like half an inch, I would say, and then probably like an inch and a half in back. And it's rounded around the edges. Again, just name of the game is tasteful. It's a tasteful pair of mules from this view right here. So from here up to the back, very tasteful. And then bloop, the cartoonification of fashion. We've been talking about it. It's here, it's arrived. All right, let's look at that sole. Oh, I love that. Okay, that's sick. So in the rubber, you've got this pressed Martine Rose logo print all over, kind of like retro feeling, I vibe. And then nice, clean and centered here, all caps made in Italy. Uh, this inside of the heel is just really lightly rounded there. And at the back, you get a little bit more of that uh, etching for grip and the logo once again. So the most interesting thing I've learned so far about these, other than just the shape, wild, is there is, I don't think any size printed or pressed anywhere into this shoe other than on the box. So if somebody resold these like without the box, they'd have to guess the size. That's actually interesting. Oh, I solved the mystery. I just solved the mystery. Okay. I brought out the other shoe just to be sure I wasn't saying anything incorrect. And do, 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 do inside the tongue of the left shoe is where you have the model and size print. So it's only on one out of the two shoes, which is interesting. All right, so now the final thing I wanna talk about here is the premise of this video, right? What I started with up at the front, what you saw in the title and the thumbnail of the video and everything, Balenciaga lied to you, right? So when you take a look at these mules, I think you'll see what I mean. Like. Demna is not the end-all be-all of Balenciaga design. They hire other people who bring their talents and their vision to the uh, creative work that Balenciaga puts out. And Martine Rose, I think, is literally the most important one of them. You look at what Balenciaga has done for literally, uh, what, is, what would that be, seven years now, and you can see how important she was. This would not look out of place at all in a Balenciaga showroom, but the fact that it's Martine, it's got that DNA that she instilled in the house starting in 2015 and then leaving in 2018, the fact that that, that element of it has still stuck around at a house she doesn't even work at anymore is incredible and shows the staying power that she has. And then the fact that she can do this at her own line and have it feel so much, so authentic, so much more authentic even than like the Balenciaga steroid whatever's I think that is super commendable and I think these I think I'm in love I love them all right we've checked out the details and now it is time to try these on I'm so excited I'm scared to know how they fit because like that bulb at the toe I don't know how it's gonna work am I gonna be flopping around in there are they gonna be too big I'm scared but we're gonna need a fit so let's find the other pieces all right, here's what we're gonna do to go with these bad boys. Uh, I saw online these were being styled with denim. So let's go Balenciaga. Let's do the camo double jeans. Oh, I love these. And for a shirt, I think we'll stick with the black and do this Marine Sayre moon print like fishnet shirt. This thing is so sick. It's, it's helped me out with so many fits over the years that I've had it. And for outerwear, let's do Balenciaga 2018 Balenciaga Prime Martina era with this insane denim graffiti back patch shirt. The details on this thing. My God, there's a video on the channel about it if you want to know more. This is one of my favorite pieces I've got. All right, let's let this fit together. Uh, oh my God, you guys. Uh, listen, I knew I liked the shoes visually, but I'll be honest, I have always had trouble with mules. Just the fit of them, I feel like I always have to have my toes kind of upturned to keep them in place. It's, a, it's a, just a weird, uncomfortable feeling for me. This is the first pair of mules I have ever worn in my entire life that just fit. Without a back of the shoe at all, they stay on just as well as any other shoe I own. My mind is legitimately blown. I, tr I don't know how she pulled this off when everyone else has failed. 
oh my God, I'm, st I'm reeling right now. I, I think it's the fact the shoe really thins out in the middle where it actually grabs you right in the middle of your foot. So it's very tight around there and that keeps it in. And I think it's because it has this kind of elastic band inside of it that really tightens to your foot. And it just makes me wonder if this is possible, if Martine was able to pull this off, why are so many other mules uncomfortable and just falling off? I'm, I'm losing it over here. So in terms of how well they stay on, 10 out of 10, A plus, like extra credit, you know, 4.5 GPA level stuff here. But how about the sizing? How about that? So these are tagged a size 43, which usually translates to a US men's size 10. And once again, Martine is bang on. These are as close to true to size as I could ever imagine a shoe being, which surprised me. A lot of Balenciaga footwear, especially their like leather, more formally shoes, are way oversized, especially recently. But these are great. And I was afraid with the giant bulb at the front that it would just make them like oversized and too big and falling off. But once again, the fact that it's grabbing you so tight at the middle of the foot, it doesn't, it doesn't matter at all that there's so much space inside the bulb because you don't need it. It's just space, it's there, it's all good. Holy crap. These are better than I ever could have imagined. These shoes are insane. So, you know, we've got the fit, the feel, the sizing, all that stuff. It's checking all of the boxes. So the only thing that's left is do they look good? Um, obviously I bought them. I would say yes, I love Balenciaga's kind of oversized cartoonish footwear. I think Martine Rose is doing it even better here. So I'm about it. I know it's not gonna sit well with a lot of people. They're gonna call them clown shoes. They're gonna dunk on them. Some people just straight up don't like mules from a visual perspective and that's fine too. But for me, these are some of the most innovative shoes that I have ever seen or worn. My mind's legitimately blown and I already respected Martine Rose, but it has risen to a brand new level here that I wasn't expecting when I set out to make this video. It's truly, I love to see it. So I think this only adds to my thesis that shows how important Martine was to Balenciaga. And I'm glad that she is pushing forward with these innovations and concepts in her own line because She's just blowing up right now. You know, new uh, Kendrick Lamar song. She's getting called out by name visually in the music video. It is going to be Martine Rose's world and we're just gonna be living in it. So if you're interested in that at all, I suggest you get in now and start learning, start picking up the pieces when you can because she's gonna be hitting a whole new level soon. All right, I hope you enjoyed that. I love these mules. They're, they're goaded. These are the best mules I've ever seen, I've ever felt, I've ever worn in my life, my lord. Thank you so much for watching. Take a look at the other video on screen here. Subscribe to my channel, like this video, and I'll see you next time.